I disguised myself to enter my rich in-law's house and saw my daughter as a maid unbelievable. It was a cold, rainy evening when I received the call that would turn my world upside down. The wind howled outside, and the rain lashed against the windows, but inside it was unnervingly silent. I was sitting alone in my modest living room, sipping a cup of tea, when my phone rang. The name on the screen made my heart skip a beat. Clara. My hands trembled as I answered the call. Clara, sweetheart, is everything okay? Her voice was barely a whisper, filled with fear and desperation. Mom, I need your help. Please, you have to come get me. What? What's happened? Where are you? I asked, my voice rising with panic. I'm at Dad's parents' house, she replied, her voice breaking. But Mom, it's not what I thought it would be. Please, you have to come. I can't explain now. Just come. Before I could ask more questions, the line went dead. I stared at the phone, my mind racing. Clara had decided to stay with her father's wealthy family for a few months to get to know them better. But now it seemed something was terribly wrong. I couldn't shake the sense of urgency and dread that had settled in my chest. Clara needed me, and I had to get to her. But how could I enter the St. Clair mansion without raising suspicion? An idea began to form, and though it was risky and a little crazy, I knew it was the only way. Clara's father, Jonathan St. Clair, came from a lineage of old money. The St. Clairs were one of the wealthiest and most influential families in the region. When Jonathan and I divorced, he remained a distant figure in Clara's life, offering financial support, but little else. Recently, however, he had reached out, wanting to reconnect with her. Clara, eager to know more about her father's side of the family, had agreed to spend some time with them. Now, as I paced my small living room, I regretted ever letting her go. I knew the St. Clairs had a high turnover rate for their household staff. They were always looking for new maids, cooks, and gardeners. That's when the idea struck me. I would disguise myself as a maid and infiltrate the mansion to rescue my daughter. The next few days were a blur of preparations. I dyed my hair a dull brown, bought a pair of thick rimmed glasses, and skirt thrift stores for a maid's uniform. I also practiced speaking with a slight accent to further obscure my identity. When I finally looked at myself in the mirror, I barely recognized the person staring back. I was ready. I applied for a maid position at the St. Clair mansion, and within a week, I received a call for an interview. The day of the interview was gray and overcast, matching my anxious mood. As I approached the imposing gates of the St. Clair estate, I felt a surge of determination. I had to get inside and find Clara. The interview was conducted by Mrs. Thatcher, the stern and no-nonsense housekeeper. She eyed me critically as I introduced myself as Emily Clark. You have experience working in large homes? She asked, her pen poised over a clipboard. Yes, ma'am, I replied, keeping my eyes downcast. I've worked in several estates, managing all household duties. She nodded, seemingly satisfied. You start tomorrow at 6 a.m. and sharp. Don't be late. I nodded, suppressing a sigh of relief. I have made it inside. The first step of my plan was complete. The next morning, I arrived at the mansion before dawn. Mrs. Thatcher handed me a list of chores and sent me on my way. The house was even more opulent than I had imagined with marble floors, crystal chandeliers, and priceless artwork adorning the walls. But I wasn't here to admire the decor. I was here to find Clara. For the next few days, I performed my duties diligently, using every opportunity to search for Clara. I cleaned rooms, dusted furniture, and polished silverware, all the while keeping my eyes and ears open. But there was no sign of her. One evening, as I was cleaning the library, I overheard a conversation between Jonathan and his parents. My heart raced as I strained to hear every word. Clara needs to learn her place, Evelyn St. Clair said, her voice cold and authoritative. She's too independent, too rebellious. Jonathan sighed. I thought bringing her here would help her understand our way of life, but she's resisting. If she doesn't fall in line, 
will have to take more drastic measures. Richard St. Clair added, his tone menacing. My blood ran cold. What did they mean by drastic measures? I had to find Clara and get her out of here before it was too late. One afternoon, while cleaning the kitchen, I noticed a door slightly ajar at the far end of the room. Curiosity peaked. I quietly slipped through the door and found myself in a narrow hallway. At the end of the hallway was another door, this one heavy and reinforced. I pressed my ear against the door, hearing muffled voices on the other side. My heart pounded as I slowly turned the handle and peeked inside. What I saw made my blood boil. Clara was there, dressed in a maid's uniform, scrubbing the floor. Her face was pale, and she looked exhausted. My precious daughter, reduced to a servant in her own family's house. I had to bite my lip to keep from crying out. Clara, I whispered urgently, stepping into the room. She looked up, her eyes widening in shock. Mom, what are you doing here? I came to find you, I said, rushing to her side. We need to get out of here now. Tears welled up in her eyes as she shook her head. I can't. They won't let me leave. They're watching me all the time. I hugged her tightly, my heart breaking for her. We'll find a way. I promise. Just hold on a little longer. Over the next few days, I gathered as much information as I could. I learned that Jonathan had fallen into debt and had sent Clara to live with his parents in the hope that they would take care of her. Instead, they had exploited her, using her as a maid to avoid hiring additional staff. I also discovered that they had confiscated her phone and restricted her access to the outside world. She was essentially a prisoner in their home. The more I learned, the more determined I became to free her. I formulated a plan. I would gather evidence of their mistreatment and contact the authorities. It was risky, but I was willing to do whatever it took to protect my daughter. One night, as I was cleaning the library, I noticed a peculiar book on one of the shelves. It was slightly ajar, as if someone had recently pulled it out. My curiosity peaked. I pulled the book, and to my astonishment, the shelf swung open, revealing a hidden room. My heart raced as I stepped inside. The room was filled with documents, photographs, and other evidence of the St. Clair's illegal activities. I took out my phone and began taking pictures, my hands shaking with adrenaline. As I was about to leave, I heard footsteps approaching. Panic surged through me, but I managed to hide behind a heavy curtain just in time. Evelyn and Richard entered the room, discussing their plans to send Clara away to a boarding school where they could keep her under even tighter control. My heart raced as I listened, knowing that I had to act fast. The next morning, I contacted a lawyer and explained the situation. With the evidence I had gathered, we had a strong case against the St. Clairs. The lawyer assured me that we could get Clara out of there, but it would take time. In the meantime, I had to keep Clara safe. I devised an escape plan and shared it with her during one of our briefs, clandestine meetings. We would wait for the perfect moment when the St. Clairs were distracted and make our move. The day of our escape arrived. Clara and I were both on edge but determined to see it through. As luck would have it, there was a grand party being held at the mansion that night. The St. Clairs were preoccupied with their guests, giving us the perfect opportunity. We made our way through the winding hallways, avoiding the partygoers and security staff. Just as we reached the back door, we were confronted by Evelyn and Richard. You can't leave, Evelyn hissed, her eyes blazing with fury. We'll ruin you. Try me, I replied calmly, holding up my phone. I have evidence of everything. If you don't let us go, this will go public. Richard's face turned ashen, and he stepped aside, allowing us to pass. With the lawyer's help, we secured Clara's freedom and took legal action against the St. Clairs. Clara and I moved into a small apartment far away from the toxic environment of her father's family. It took time, but with therapy and a lot of love, Clara began to heal. She returned to her vibrant, spirited self, and our bond grew stronger than ever. 
The experience had changed us both. We learned the importance of standing up for ourselves and each other, no matter the odds. Our journey was far from over, but we faced it together, ready to take on whatever challenges came our way. The evidence I had gathered was instrumental in bringing the St. Clairs to justice. They were charged with multiple counts of illegal activity, including human trafficking and exploitation. The trial was long and grueling, but in the end, they were found guilty and sentenced to prison. Clara and I attended every day of the trial, finding strength in each other. The sight of the St. Clairs being led away in handcuffs was a moment of vindication, but it was bittersweet. We had lost so much, but we had also gained a newfound sense of resilience and determination. With the trial behind us, Clara, and I focused on rebuilding our lives. We moved to a new city, where no one knew our past, and started fresh. Clara enrolled in college, pursuing her dream of becoming a social worker, determined to help others who had been through similar ordeals. As for me, I found work as a teacher, finding joy in helping young minds grow and flourish. Our new life was simple, but it was filled with love and hope. We had been through the fire and emerged stronger, ready to face whatever the future held. Our journey had been a long and arduous one, filled with fear, pain, and uncertainty. But it was also a testament to the power of love and the unbreakable bond between a mother and daughter. No matter how dark the path, we had found our way through, guided by our love for each other.